We fill the dark with stories, tidy myths for a sky that refuses to be tidy. But the cosmos does not flatter us. It corrects us, quietly, relentlessly. For as long as we've gazed upward, space has been the canvas of our imagination. It's where myths are born, where half-truths echo louder than facts, and where the unknown leaves room for stories that sound convincing but fall apart under the weight of science. These myths don't just mislead us, they rob us of something far more precious, the real wonder of the universe. The truth, as it turns out, is stranger, deeper, and more beautiful than the myths we grew up with. If you've ever imagined astronauts floating in zero gravity, if you've heard that black hole suck everything like cosmic vacuum cleaners, or if you've wondered whether sound can travel across the void, then this is for you. For thousands of years, myths about the heavens have held enormous power over us. They shape how we imagine the cosmos, how we picture planets, stars, and the space between them. Even today, in an age of telescopes that can peer back billions of years into the history of the universe, we still cling to ideas that are little more than stories repeated so often they begin to sound true. Myth versus reality is not just a matter of scientific detail, it is about how we perceive the universe itself. The constellations we draw are ours, the laws behind them are not. And when we test our stories against reality, something unsettling happens. The universe becomes stranger and more beautiful than we were prepared for. Let's start with the gentlest misbelief, the fable of zero gravity. Take, for example, the myth of zero gravity in space. Most people imagine astronauts floating in the International Space Station because gravity has been switched off, as though space were some kinds of magical void where the force that binds planets and stars together simply disappears. The reality is far richer and far more interesting. Astronauts float not because gravity is absent, but because they, along with their spacecraft, are falling continuously around the Earth. They are in what scientists call microgravity. Earth's gravity still pulls on them with nearly the same strength as it does here at the surface, but because they are in orbit, they are perpetually falling without ever hitting the ground. This distinction changes everything because it reminds us that gravity is not something you can just turn off. It is the invisible glue that holds galaxies together, bends light across the cosmos, and gives shape to the universe. To imagine a universe without gravity is to imagine a universe without structure. Weightlessness isn't escape, it's choreography. Bodies and stations falling together, forever missing the ground. A reminder, the universe doesn't turn forces off for our convenience. In freefall, a pen drifts like a thought unmoored. Water beads become wandering worlds, surface tension shaping tiny planets. This is not absence, it's a new grammar for motion, written by gravity, spoken by inertia. Another myth persists about the nature of black holes. They are often thought of as monstrous cosmic vacuum cleaners, sucking up everything in their path with unstoppable hunger. The truth is more subtle and far more fascinating. A black hole is not some arbitrary destroyer roaming the galaxy. It is the final state of a massive star that has collapsed under its own gravity. If our sun were magically replaced by a black hole of the same mass, Earth's orbit would remain exactly the same. We would continue circling it as before, though of course, without sunlight, life would end. The point is that black holes only pull in matter that ventures too close, crossing what is known as the event horizon. They are not galactic predators, they are the remnants of stars. Written in the language of relativity, bending space and time in ways that stretch the imagination. To call them vacuum cleaners diminishes them. The reality that they are gateways to the extremes of physics, where our understanding of gravity, time, and matter reaches its breaking point, is infinitely more dramatic. We fear black holes as predators. They're more terrifying as principles. The remains of collapsed suns. Boundaries where escape becomes a number larger than light. Not hunger. Geometry. Think of them not as mouths, but as mirrors that warp what they reflect. Time slowed, light reddened, paths curved into spirals. They obey, that is why they unsettle. And then, the quiet, the lie in every movie explosion, the truth every astronaut learns. Then there is the myth of sound in space. Science fiction films love to fill the silence with roaring engines and thunderous explosions, but space itself is profoundly quiet. Sound needs a medium air, water, or some other material for vibrations to travel through. In the vacuum of space, there is no medium, and so no sound can travel. 
If a spaceship exploded beside you, you would see the blinding flash of light, feel the searing heat if you were close enough, but you would hear nothing. Silence in space is not dull, it is haunting. It means that the universe speaks not in sound but in light. Every star, every galaxy, every nebula communicates with us across the void through photons, streams of radiation and gravitational waves. Silence is not emptiness, it is a canvas. Photons etch stories across it. Gravity composes the choreography. Radiation carries the score. We learn to hear what our ears cannot. Detectors for eyes, mathematics for lyrics. Why do these myths endure? Partly because they are simple and our brains are wired to embrace simple stories. Zero gravity feels easier to imagine than orbital mechanics. Black holes as monsters feel more dramatic than the quiet mathematics of Einstein's equations. Explosions in space feel cinematic in a way that silent flashes of light do not. But simplicity often strips away truth, and in doing so, it robs us of something essential. The real universe is not simple. It is subtle, delicate, and governed by principles that are stranger and more beautiful than any myth. The battle between myth and reality is not about winning an argument or pointing out mistakes. It is about opening a door to a greater sense of wonder. Each time a myth is exposed, the truth that replaces it leaves us not with disappointment, but with awe. To discover that astronauts float because they are falling forever is not mundane, it is poetic. To learn that black holes do not devour the universe at random, but stand as cosmic memorials to dying stars is not limiting, it is inspiring. Simple tales are warm, accurate ones are cold and clarifying. Choose the cold, and the night opens. Choose it again, and you begin to see the next correction coming. If myths distort the sky, some attempt to erase our footprints upon it. Few myths about space have captured the public imagination as powerfully as the idea that the moon landings were faked. Even half a century after astronauts first set foot on the lunar surface, there are still those who insist it was all filmed in a Hollywood studio, a grand deception staged to win the space race. The myth thrives on suspicion, on the human tendency to doubt what feels too extraordinary to be true. But if we pause and look closely at the evidence, we find that the truth is not only undeniable, it is far more inspiring than the fiction. The fact that human beings walked on the moon is one of the greatest achievements in our history, and to dismiss it as an elaborate hoax diminishes not only science, but our capacity for imagination and courage. The myth usually begins with photographs. Conspiracy theorists point to the iconic images of astronauts standing in stark sunlight, their shadows cast across a desolate, alien landscape. They claim the shadows fall in different directions, as though they were illuminated by studio lights. The reality is far simpler, the moon's surface is uneven, and shadows cast over ridges and slopes naturally diverge. It's the same effect you see when walking across a hill on Earth at sunset. Shadows stretch in unpredictable angles, not because the sun is lying to us, but because the ground beneath us is not flat. The so-called evidence dissolves the moment you understand the landscape. Another favorite point is the absence of stars in the photographs. If astronauts really stood on the moon, shouldn't the sky be filled with constellations? Yet when you look at the images, the lunar sky is pitch black. The truth again lies in physics and technology, not in deceit. The cameras used were set to capture the brightly lit lunar surface, reflecting intense sunlight. Just as a camera on Earth can't capture stars during the daytime because the brightness of the sky washes them out, the cameras on the moon were unable to register faint starlight against the dazzling reflection of the surface. Uneven ground bends shadows, exposure drowns starlight. The universe is not obligated to match our expectations or our conspiracies. The myth goes further, pointing to the American flag. In some images, it appears to ripple as though blown by wind. But of course, the moon has no atmosphere. To the suspicious mind, this is proof of a staged scene. In truth, the flag was specially designed with a horizontal support rod to hold it out, otherwise it would simply hang limp in the weak lunar gravity. When astronauts twisted the pole into the ground, the fabric shook, and in the low gravity it took longer for the motion to settle. What appears to be wind is nothing more than momentum preserved in an environment without air resistance. Again, the supposed anomaly is not evidence of fraud, but a reminder of the strange and unfamiliar conditions on the moon. Perhaps the strongest counterargument to the hoax theory is not photographic at all, but lies in science itself. The Apollo missions left behind instruments that were used by scientists for decades. One of these was the retroflector, a device designed to bounce laser beams back to Earth. To this day, observatories can shine lasers at the moon and measure the precise distance by timing the return signal. These reflectors were placed there by human hands and their presence is undeniable. No stage set on Earth could have left a mirror on the moon that continues to reflect light across 384,000 kilometers of space.
Then there is the human testimony not just of the astronauts, but of the thousands of engineers, scientists, and workers who built the Apollo program piece by piece. To believe the moon landings were faked is to believe that hundreds of thousands of people conspired together, kept silent for half a century, and fabricated data, telemetry, and hardware that functioned exactly as described. Large conspiracies unravel because people talk, and yet in this case no credible evidence of deception has ever surfaced. Instead, what has survived is a record of immense human effort, ingenuity, and bravery. The persistence of the moon hoax myth tells us something uncomfortable about ourselves. It shows how myths can endure not because of lack of evidence, but because of our desire to cling to them. The idea of a hoax makes people feel clever, as though they see through the lies of authority. It feeds a suspicion of power, which is not entirely unjustified, but in this case, it blinds us to the truth. The irony is that the real story, those human beings left Earth, cross the void, and set foot on another world, is far more extraordinary than any conspiracy could ever hope to be. To stand on the moon is to stand where no life had ever stood before. It is to look back and see the Earth suspended in darkness, fragile and blue, a reminder of how small and precious our world really is. This is what the Apollo astronauts experienced, and this is what the photographs and records truly capture. Denying it does not expose a lie. It erases one of the most inspiring chapters of our history. Truth leaves artifacts that keep shining back. So why do we cling to the dark? You've just explored another fragment of the unknown with Voidverse. If you want more stories from the dark between the stars, subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss what's next. I run videos ad light for a better experience. If you want to help me keep it that way, you can fuel the mission on Buy Me A Coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash voidverse.